Hey everybody, Saul here. I have only one rule here. If it's animated, I'll comment on it. Did you ever play that game Psychonauts? You know, the cult classic game released by Double Fine in 2005 for the Xbox, Windows, and PS2 about a psychic boy who goes to psychic camp and has all kinds of wacky misadventures? Did you know that it actually got a movie in 2015? And it's about a bird boy who has a demon trapped inside him who's in love with a rabbit as they try to escape an island after an industrial apocalypse? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today, little known movie known as Psychonatas Los Niños Olvidados, or Bird Boy, The Forgotten Children. Psychonatas Los Niños Olvidados, known in English as Psychonauts, The Forgotten Children, or alternatively Bird Boy, The Forgotten Children, is a 2D Spanish hand-drawn animated film created by Alberto Vasquez and Pedro Rivero, which is based off of Vasquez's comic Bird Boy and the subsequent short film of the same name released in 2011. The film was produced by all of these production companies and distributed by La Luna de Tantan in September 2015 at the San Sebastian Film Festival before going on to win Best Animated Feature Award at the Goya Awards in 2016. Ha! I fooled you! This movie has absolutely nothing to do with Tim Schafer's game despite having the same name in Spanish for some reason. That's right, I am a master of deception. That was extreme foolies right there. Watch me. Watch me as I blow your mind! <laughs> This is Psychonatas Los Niños Olvidados. I know I kind of already explained the plot during my mandatory preamble, but I'll explain it again for those of you who skipped that part. Yes, you can rush ahead and not feel guilt this time around. As if any of you feel guilty about that. So then, one day, on an island populated by anthropomorphic animals, a massive industrial explosion takes place, decimating a large chunk of the island and killing all of the fish in the ocean. Bird Boy, a boy who is a bird, appears to be trying to find a way to restore the island to the way it was after the explosion and the death of his father, but he is hunted by the police on suspicion of smuggling drugs. Meanwhile, a rebellious teenage oh. rabbit by the name of Dinky tries to find a way off the island with her friends Sandra and Little Fox, all the while trying to reconcile with Bird Boy's unfortunate circumstances and find her way into his heart. Yeah, you wouldn't really expect this kind of hyper-involved plot from a movie with characters that would look right at home in a children's storybook or one of those abominable kid flash animations on YouTube, but there it is. Now, as it stands, I think the plot is rather interesting and lays the groundwork for many instances of tantalizing intrigue and fascination. Notice though that I didn't say that it is intriguing and fascinating. We'll elaborate a little bit more on that as we go, little buddies. But for now, let's turn our peepers to the characters. Even though technically the movie is named after him, Bird Boy isn't really the protagonist. I'm going to talk about him first anyway though, because he's got top billing, and that is far more important than any actual established protagonists. Isn't that right, My Little Pony the movie? You fuck ass! <laughs> so, uh, yes, Bird Boy. He's something of an enigma, once being an innocent boy of birds living with his father. But after the explosion occurs, Bird Boy becomes reclusive and withdrawn, desperately wrestling with his inner demons, figuratively and literally. And he does this all without speaking a single word. See? You can have a silent protagonist and still have them be a complicated and attention-grabbing character, as long as you put in the time and effort. I'm looking at you, Breath of the Wild! You fuck ass! As much as I like Bird Boy and all his intricacies, I find it difficult to understand what his overall deal is. It was made slightly more clear with repeat watches, but it still kind of eludes me what the true nature of his goals are and how he plans to achieve them. And I'm not gonna ask you fuckers out there to explain it for me. Last time I did that, this happened! <coughs> So the real protagonist is actually Dinky, a teenage rabbit rebel who disobeys her parents and tries to find a boat to escape the island along with her friends. She also cares deeply for Bird Boy and wishes he would leave the island with her. Surprisingly, even though Dinky is a rebel without a cause, I personally feel she doesn't tick any of the boxes on my well-worn annoyance checklist. Though, I should attach a niggle note as an addendum to that statement, which says that I don't really get the relationship between Dinky and everyone else, except her parents, beyond incidental circumstantialities. 
Not a complaint, honestly. The movie just isn't very good at establishing things like when and why. But that's jumping the gun a little, isn't it? Let's talk about Sandra first, Dinky's friend from school who has a reputation for being violent and crazy, hearing sinister voices in her head that tell her to do bad things. Hey, we all been there, it's alright. I mean, Las Vegas wouldn't exist if we weren't all there, right? Sandra, too, is appealing in concept, much like Bird Boy, but she, also like Bird Boy, has a deal that is hard to ascertain. Maybe I could, with a team of scientists and all the time left until the universe gets swallowed into entropy. But until then, let's leave her be with just a check mark. There's also Little Fox, the butter stotch of the young runaways, That's me. as he seems to be the most innocent and naive. How he became friends with the seditious oh. rabbits is anyone's guess, because the movie sure as hell doesn't tell you why. Little Fox is quite adorable, but there isn't much to him beyond that. It's probably not his fault, though, and there's a good reason for that. I'll explain more later if your attention spans don't give out and you click off to another video. <laughs> oh, and um, uh, 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 there's also a pig named Zachariah, and he- He's back! It's really, really bad! Alright, so if you can pay attention for a minute or two, I'll explain to you what's good about this movie. And I'll start where I normally start, by saying the visuals are delicious. Due to the nature of it being hand-drawn, the art style perfectly complements the bleak and nihilistic world it tries to create, even if the character designs are somewhat out of place in this kind of environment. Not that I mind, though, it creates a nice sense of juxtaposition. The art style is very much like the game Hollow Knight, if it was written by Mother Horse Eyes or something like that, and it gets my thumb way up. Something else that gets that upwards raised thumb is the fact that this movie is actually really violent. You wouldn't guess it from just a cursory glance, but yes, the blood is flowing free like wine in this movie's runtime. The violence actually serves a purpose too, you see? Unlike some offenders out there, and that makes the tickling of my bloody violence buns all that much more giddying. In general though, the majority of the bun tickling comes from the fact that this movie is just thematically dark as fuck. Seriously, this ain't no happy movie, so don't be fooled. If you're going into this movie expecting to come out feeling anything other than despair and sadness, then I suggest you go watch something else, like The Oogie Loves or Spookly the Square Pumpkin, because you'll be sorely disappointed. That darkness stems from the fact that you can see, even with just a whiff of its bleeding shadows, that this entire thing is clearly a passion project, much in the vein of films like The Secret of Kells and Anomalisa. An unflinching, uncompromising look into the dark corners of the creator's hearts. Some people can't take that headfirst dive into the sticky shade of the soul this movie swims around in, but I certainly can, and I've got my swim cap all ready to go. Hell, I'm an Olympic-class darkness swimmer at this point. My favorite place to swim is in the dark and dim. But that's enough of the praise. It's time to get my huff on with a look at the bad things this movie squirts out like chunky blackheads on a pristine butt cheek. For starters, I've been touching upon this here and there in this review, but now's the time to explain. <clears throat> this movie has a serious problem explaining why things happen. Context is considered a federal offense in the film, so that results in many questions being raised that never get answered in any satisfying way. It probably has to do with the fact that the world and the rules therein aren't really explained very well, making me ask questions such as, why can that inflatable duck talk? Why can that alarm clock talk when no other technology can? Why is there a dog in a gimp mask? What in fuck hell is up with that spider in the pig's nose? And so on. I guess it's triumph enough that the movie made me care enough to actually ask those questions, but getting no answers is somewhat frustrating. I would say that this movie doesn't make sense, but that would open the floodgates for another tsunami of commenters telling me I'm a big thicky dum-dum, so no, I'm not going to say that. What I am going to say is that this movie does commit a cardinal sin of creative writing, one which you've probably heard brought up in a lot of reviews, and for good reason. That rule being, if this isn't the most important part of your story, why aren't you showing us that? That rule is broken here, in that I feel like the story this movie isn't telling us is a thousand times more interesting than what it does tell us, causing me to just make things up to try and fill in the gaps of context and explanation. And how dare you make me use my imagination movie? That's supposed to be reserved for Sonic the Hedgehog OCs and making up swear words like fuck scrabble or boob crunch. Hey, those are good ones. 
In fact, the rule breaking doesn't stop there. It also fails to understand the meaning of Chekhov's gun. And here's a quick explanation for those of you who don't know what that is either. Things such as Sandra's schizophrenia and the talking clock are introduced, but then are swiftly forgotten about without any significant contributions to the story, despite their supposed importance. Really though, this movie is kind of just vague about everything in general. It seems to operate on the shifting logic of a dream, and I think that's the best way to view this movie, as a mutable nightmare. You can't really explain or rationalize anything that happens, and it'll definitely stick with you once it's over, but trying to think too deeply about it is futile. Lastly, let me make a more concrete point and say that this is one of those movies where it doesn't have an ending. The ending is less like this. and more like this. So, much like context, closure is also a federal offense in this movie. So if you don't want to be arrested, you better just get it. Psychonatas Los Niños Olvidados, aka Bird Boy the Forgotten Children, isn't really what I'd call a movie. Because if I did classify it as a movie, it'd be missing a lot of the key elements that make a movie an actual, you know, movie. Therefore, in order to curb the brunt of the criticism I've slathered onto it, I prefer to look at this more as an experience than a movie. If you detach yourself from the desires of closure or context, then you can just enjoy some strange events in the capricious and macabre lives of these cute but caustic characters. Just don't take too close of a look, for there are some deep, dark demon holes that should never be peeked into. I give Psychonautas Los Niños Olvidados, or Bird Boy the Forgotten Children, So, Psychonatos Los Niños Olvidados, is it watchable? Absolutely, yes it is. The amount of detail and style that goes into us really shows how much the creators cared, and that is such a valuable virtue to me. Is it enjoyable? Well, if you weren't one to enjoy the dark and dismal, then nobody do. But if you're like me and you enjoy that kind of stuff, then absolutely, yes. Is it memorable? Well, fucked if I know. It's one of those movies that, once you see it, you'll probably remember it for the rest of your life. But until then, it's almost like it didn't need to exist at all. Almost like it didn't even exist. And that's... that's a scary thought. Never existing, or no one ever knowing you existed. That's... that is scary. I mean, it's not like I'd know anything about that, right? Never existing. Nope. I don't know anything about that. Would you like to stay up to date on the latest Eye of Saul news, as well as contribute directly to my channel? You can find my Twitter page, my Facebook page, and my link to my Patreon page there on the screen for you, as well as in the description. I update the Twitter and Facebook pages every day, so if you want to check out news on the show, as well as updates, just follow the links here.